Okay, now let's go ahead and do some failovers in PowerShell. We'll come over here to PowerShell and we'll say move cluster group. And we're just going to move the SQL services first. Let's go in here and watch everything happen. We watch everything go offline and then come back online. Hopefully it won't be too long. Here we go, the VI is online, and now everything is online. And in PowerShell, it should, there we go, it tells us the new owner node, which is SQL node 1, and it tells us that it's online. So if we wanted to specify a node, if we had like a 3 or a 5 node cluster, we could do that by simply putting the node right after that. I want to move these to SQL node 2. And you'll see these guys going offline and coming back online in here. There we go. Now, let's go back into PowerShell again, and let's move the cluster resources themselves. So instead of moving the SQL group, we're going to call this simply cluster group. And we should be able to come in here and watch it failing over. It's on node 2 now. I don't know where it was before. But we'll come up now. Okay, so it's on node 2. Now if we do that again, we should be able to watch it go to node 1. And I saw this flash on and off really quick. And here it is on SQL node 1 now. And it should give us a status here in just a second. There we go. So that's how you fail over both the cluster and SQL in PowerShell. Now why would you want to do this? I alluded to it before that it's a lot easier and it can be a lot faster. But it's also a lot less error prone. Let's say that you have a maintenance window and you need to patch one of your nodes. Well, you could easily make sure that none of the services are running on that node by writing a script ahead of time. You can pass in a couple parameters and you can make sure that both SQL and the Windows resources are all on your second node or all on your third node while you do maintenance on one of the other nodes. And absolutely, you could do all of that by hand as well. But you're going to find as you go on that it's a lot faster and a lot less error prone to write a script that just takes a couple parameters. And that way you know everything's going to be done the exact same way every single time. And you could also do this on a few boxes. If you've got multiple instances on this box, then you can have one script that takes care of absolutely everything. And it turns into a one button push for you instead of spinning you know, the next 30 or 45 minutes doing different things in the GUI and having to keep track of it. So not only is it faster it's, and more efficient, but it's also less error prone. But it's also a really good idea to do stuff like this because you can stage it a lot easier, right? So let's say that you've got a complicated operation that you need to perform and you want to rehearse it a few times in a dev environment. So you've got yourself a dev cluster. Maybe you've done something like I've done here, right? You've got a few VMs that you've set up and you've set up a cluster in there and you want to test this operation to make sure that everything goes okay. Well, if you script it and you add parameters to it, then all you have to do after that is just change the parameters on the production side when you go to do it for real and everything should work just fine. So there isn't any of this, well, it worked this way over here and it's going to work this way and, and it may or may not work that way over there. If you script it, it should work just fine if your environments are really close. So you get to do all of that work up front. And then when the time comes, you don't have to redo all of that work because you're doing it in the GUI. You do all of that work up front with the script and then it just translates directly over into production. And you can even hand it off to somebody else if, if you're not going to be around and they should be able to run it. So doing things in script like this is definitely the way to go. But anyway, that's failover in PowerShell and a little bit of reasoning behind why you might want to put the time into learning how to do your cluster operations in PowerShell.